This is the Powerlifting America podcast, and today we've got a quick check-in with Jonathan Keiko. He's just two weeks out from Sheffield. We talked about his prep and goals for Sheffield, his heartbreaking loss at Worlds in 2022, and a bunch of stuff that you probably didn't know about the man that they call the fridge. But before I bring Jonathan in, make sure you don't miss Sheffield. Tickets are still available. Click the link in the description below for more information. Thank you to SBD and Aleko for their continued partnership with Powerlifting America. If you're looking to compete in drug-tested powerlifting, whether you're just starting out or want to compete with the best in the world, make sure you go to powerlifting-america.com, become a member, check out our event page for all of our upcoming events and our store page for PA merch, and be sure to follow us on Instagram at powerlifting underscore America. Okay, now let's get to this quick check-in with Jonathan Keiko. All right, here we are. We got Mr. Bench, former world champion, Jonathan Keiko. Welcome to the Powerlifting America podcast. What's up, man? How are you doing? What's up, man? Doing great. How is uh how is the prep going right now? You're two weeks out from Sheffield, um, the biggest meet ever. Um, how are you feeling? How are you feeling right now going into it? I feel fantastic. Like I I don't think you can have a better prep. <laughs> That's great to hear. Yeah, like That's... yeah, it's been just like I mentioned in the uh interview with SPD. Um that was the one thing I was like when we did that interview i was like oh it's been a clean like nine to ten months of prep i was like, i hope i didn't just jinx myself you know what i mean yeah <laughs> but no it's been it's been good it's been very good so no there's no jinx in it man i yeah. mean it's it's you know we we do nine lifts you you're good for it i'm sure like no amount of jinxing can stop you from those nine lifts that you're yeah. about to do um so we're two weeks out from sheffield how excited are you just about to be a part of this amazing meet. I mean, for a minute there, it was questionable. I think everyone expected that you were going to get in, but you know, finally the wild cards came out, you got a wild card and just, um, what does it mean? How special is this meet for you? Oh, it, it means the world, you know, um, it's the main reason I actually competed in, uh, 2022. Okay. Uh, you know, I was just like, it's, 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 it's special. You know, mm-hmm. like as much as sometimes I like to downplay it for myself, just like, oh, it's just a meet, you know what I mean? Mentally. But it, 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 yeah, it is, it is a special meet, you know, and I'm extremely like, I'm extremely grateful and extremely like excited just to be a part of it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I'm just, I'm just, I'm just happy to be a part of history. Like even, you know what I mean? Just at this point yeah. is like, whoever is doing this meet, you know, let's all just enjoy it for just being there, you know, so I mean, just as a fan, being a part of Powerlifting America, we've got nine lifters. I feel uh, like just blessed to even have a tiny little, little piece of it as well, you know? So, um, I can only imagine actually being on the stage and the platform, like how big it will be. You said that this was part of the reason why you competed in 2022. Um, so what, what do you mean by that? Were you, if it weren't for Sheffield, would you have skipped nationals in Austin and skipped worlds? Honestly, probably <laughs> you were you were borderline you were about yeah you were really thinking about it yeah i was like because especially in a 2021 let me jump back another year mm-hmm. um i had three meets uh within six months of each other um mm-hmm. and in those three meets i went into each of them more hurt than the last one yeah so that just like yeah, that, that just you know that just wears you down and you you know that's you, you know that was coming straight off of the pandemic um Mm -hmm. i lived with uh a lot of high risk uh people so there were just like zero chances of you know just going to a gym and so everything was training at home yeah so right off that i i got hurt training in the at the home gym because the floor was unleveled Mm. um so you know it was just like a buildup of injuries uh throughout 16 months or so and when i had one world's and I'll be transparent, you know, like I love competing. I love competing so much. Mm-hmm. But after I had won Worlds in 2021, uh, I spoke to uh, Ryan, six pack. Mm-hmm. He came out to me. He was like, oh, congrats, man. Right. It, this was over in uh, Sweden at the time. Yeah. And he was he was like, what's next? And I was like, my initial response was like, I want a little breather for myself. You yeah. know, just like, you know, I'm not done, but I'm just going to take a breather, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and fast forward a little bit uh i was want is you know i, I wasn't we weren't sure about sheffield yet yeah. and because yeah. i was still like way back then yeah and um 
they were like hey if you want to just like guarantee a spot you got to do worlds you got to win worlds and i was like so i got to do nets and i got to do you know mm-hmm, um mm-hmm. so i did have a long off season this is why i did well at the uh powerlifting american nationals of last year yeah you had like, uh, it looks like you had about uh six months yeah so six six and a half something from yeah. sweden because the sweden worlds was kind of weird it was in september um so it's kind of a little bit off like because mm-hmm. of covid and everything so right <clears throat> so you know i had a little bit of time but i was still pretty pretty not just banged up well you know i'd, I'd heal a, a fair amount mm-hmm. but i was still pretty tired just yeah. doing a lot of meets you know yeah. just kind of exhausted well, like with training yeah. as well <clears throat> just like in general yeah because mm-hmm. i had done because um <clears throat> you know going from even let's go back even further Mm -hmm. uh 2019 i win nationals um you know i'm gonna go to worlds uh where was it It was supposed to be in belarus right yeah it was yeah that's right i remember Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i remember sitting in the in my home gym you know covid happens and it's early covid i remember them announcing that worlds is no way no way Mm -hmm. you know i remember just my heart dropping about that and i'm just like you know, we don't know, uh, you know, you got to play by ear. You don't know what's, do I have to do another meet? Do, you know, is this going to roll over? You know, you know, you don't know what's yeah. going to happen. Uh, so, and then later on in 2020, I find out that I have to win nationals again. And mm-hmm. I'm just, you know, I'm just like, okay, well, um, I hadn't competed in a long time. Let me do a tune-up meet um, from 2019 to 2021. That I didn't, I didn't do, I, there were no meets, you know, for, yeah. through 2020 um so i do a meet february of tw- uh, late february of 2021 yep. i put up that 892 and a half total um and that was great i love you know that uh that was a it was huge it was a good performance yeah um and that was in your home gym i mean that, that was, was in that was in iron office that yeah that, that was, was yeah so that was coming from the home gym into the into the iron office um mm-hmm. i remember that meet i don't want to get too sidetracked here but i remember unracking weights at the at that meet and it was weird because the floor was leveled <sighs> like i had like gone used to being kind of shifted here and there you know yeah um <clears throat> man we i did, saw you yeah. you were benching off of like chairs and yeah all kinds yeah. of weird bunker stuff. yeah um i had i fortunately had a a bench but i didn't have a rack which was interesting <laughs> yeah, i saw that stuff. i'm so, like this man's a big bencher and he those wicker chairs are not oh my goodness hold. i i remember we built uh nina and i built some stuff out of two by fours a little rack out of two by fours and i did a, i think the heaviest bench i took was a 455 bench and when i racked it it like cut, it almost toppled over and nina had to catch it uh-huh. <laughs> um crazy times man yeah man and he is that crazy it's like what three years ago at this point yeah i mean it feels so long ago but it's not really that long ago three years no, you know no. it feels like it's, an eternity ago it's but... long in powerlifting because i think yeah. the scope of powerlifting is so <laughs> short the time horizons are so short right but yeah it was just you know feels really in real life that was like 10 minutes ago yeah so you know i do that meet um i do nationals mm-hmm. uh when i <laughs> cross my fingers you know uh leading in the uh doing the 20 21 nationals yeah uh, at the time um i had a bunch of travel issues yeah i remember <clears throat> um, all over florida you spent all like my days, goodness days in florida yeah because uh our flight got delayed in uh, dfw dallas fort worth yeah which made us miss our flight and then we had to get a separate flight to gainesville and we had to take a like a three-hour uh, uber yeah from the you know so yeah. Because when we got to Gainesville, we actually were going to get a rental. I remember. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then, um, but that they were all closed. We were like, what? And then we had to find an Uber. Uh, and then by the time I got to the hotel, I was like, I had been walking like the entire day, you know? Uh, there was yeah. just a lot about the traveling. And that but me, I won. Yeah, that me, I won. Out. Yeah, I won, I won out. by a, a pound, I believe. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Gavin came in and kind of, you know, like, like, no no one really no one knew who he was at that time we knew he was strong and everything but man he was way stronger than we expected but yeah i mean you balled out um you know hit some national record bench had the chip there to win it and um 
and still that was that's one of your best totals 880 i mean that is a that's a hell of a total yeah um so, and so then, that was a yeah. good sign yeah and then we go to worlds and the turnaround from nets to worlds i think was only three months or is it four months June. yeah it was uh it was very fast it was actually three months almost to the day it was like three months yeah. in a week yep <clears throat> and i remember jumping straight back in the prep after the um and then that one was probably my worst injury i hurt my left knee i believe that's that how many in- no 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 uh, about six weeks out from the worlds in sweden 2021 okay okay um so that whole year was just riddled with injuries you know and then i had to not just that but then i gotta go perform yeah you know um and, and you balled out again you know 873 <clears throat> like a little dip in the total but enough yeah. to win i know gustav again like kind of pushed you to the limit you took what was there you took your chips on bench and and um nudged that one out and got the dub again so yeah yeah so there's a the quick little timeline about um so by the time i get to that point um i'm like hey you know i might just take 2022 off just so you know just for myself like i'll still I train thought, yeah just yeah. but yeah not compete i heard i heard i'm not sure if, if it was ryan or somewhere on instagram or something but i kind of heard something like you were thinking about doing that yeah um, you know but then okay so sheffield was the big thing that once they announced it then you said okay i gotta go to worlds you were on usvi for that trip to sweden right right and so then oh, you very were, thankful yeah. yeah amazing Camilla yeah. walford everything that she did to for for everyone on TV, oh so. yeah and then you know like that like after i won nationals again uh there was that there was just there was a separation yeah you know and then for a few weeks we were just like well yeah. like we lost it I, I lost worlds again you know i lost that mm-hmm. uh the, the spot's gone again and like what's next do i have to do i have to win again you know i remember i remember asking uh, Nina, my my uh, my girlfriend, and just talking to you know, just talking to my peers and uh, mm-hmm. even like my 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 mom, I'm like, man, like, do it? Do I have to go win again? You know, like, yeah. I remember, I remember you, you sparked that memory, uh, bringing that up. Um, so there was just a lot, you know, it was just a lot of things to consider, um, as we moved forward, and everything had every like the entire year was well, honestly, it was almost like two years of just playing by ear. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know so um what's gonna happen exactly and i mean thank god for usvi kimberly walford everything that she did to help hook up team usa for that 2021 worlds Um, that was huge Um, she's a saint for everything that she does for the sport um okay so then spd you know was did someone reach out to you and say hey look you know we're gonna do this thing for real now and you need to go to powerlifting american nationals and then you need to go or or usvi nationals and then you need to go you know back to worlds again and try to qualify for sheffield right um i don't remember the exact timeline it was i i know it was after worlds i want to say maybe if i had to guess it was probably around december Mm -hmm. um i think i was just on a phone call with spd um Mm -hmm. you know we're just chatting and um they're like hey um you know just some sheffield updates you know i'm like okay um and they're like hey if you if you want to like guarantee that spot you got to win you got to win worlds again okay and i was like well i know what that means you know <laughs> like you know yeah. I, I you know i was like well i guess i gotta gotta go do nets again gotta you know um mm-hmm. so did you think about going usvi again as much as i wanted to mm-hmm. i did want to um lift for powerlifting america when that when that did happen mm-hmm. i was i was i was um i was very my priority was more for powerlifting america at that point okay okay right. well damn we're lucky we're lucky that you did and and that we you know we're lucky that sheffield happened to have oh, you yeah. come back because the battle between you and chance at nationals last year was like that was the biggest battle of the whole whole event and um other than seeing jesus squat like 992 you know, it was you and chance. That was, that was the whole thing. I mean, yeah. without that, and it was an epic battle. You put up a huge total again in 888 with another bench chip and, um, very close to your best total ever. And so you were obviously on. Yeah. That uh, um, that me, I kind of, I, I believe I came in pretty healthy, uh, mm-hmm. for the 888. Um, yeah, I remember benching, I think I took five thirty 
one or something from my bench um and i was like oh i had more you know <laughs> like yeah yeah and rack day i was like oh i could have done more than this you know but um yeah. um yeah that was a you know um real quick uh i you know i just want to say thanks to um kimberly I, I said I said it thanks to her in person a million times. We had a good we had good chats. She actually approached me, um, kind of jumping forward. She approached me in uh, South Africa uh, mm-hmm. after after the competition, and we we had a good uh, chat as well there. So yeah. I'm extremely thankful for her and uh, everyone around her. I'm very fortunate. I mean, um, to have you know, I meet people like you and Nina and Joey and everyone, and I got to go to the uh, NAPF North Americans this year and uh in panama and kimberly we walk into the to the tournament hotel the meet hotel and uh first person i see is kimberly walford and i'm just like oh my god like like <laughs> this is like i'm like we're not worthy to meet you, kimberly, <laughs> yeah. you know and and uh, it was funny because i was with our intern and every time kimberly walked by i'm like oh my god it's kimberly walford oh my god you know it's like she's she's like the goat one of the greatest of all time and uh our intern's like hey just act normal, man. It's all right. It's like, you know, and I'm like, she, I'm, I'm, you know, the older guy and she's super young and she's telling me to be cool. So, uh, but it was funny cause I got to meet her and hang out with her and talk to her a lot. And man, yeah. she's just an awesome person. We're awesome. Awesome. Yeah. That she's in our sport. I mean, right. our sport would be different without Kimberly. So, Oh yeah. Um, okay. So we're two weeks out now from Sheffield, you know, we will go back into, and we'll talk a little bit about worlds 2022 in South Africa, because, um, it was an epic, it was an epic session. And, um, but how are you feeling right now going into Sheffield? The best way I can describe it is I don't think I could be more prepared than I am now. Okay. And that makes me really happy because every other me, I'm always like, I wish I did this. I wish I did that or I wish this wasn't hurting or I wish that wasn't hurting. Yeah. You know, um, cross my fingers. I still have about a, a, a week to train, but, um, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, it's been like 10 months of just no, nothing, no hurting. Like it's not that I'm not pushing training, you know? Um, so I'm like absolutely prepared and I'm just ready. I'm just excited. And, um, I just want to, do the total i know i can do now you know mm-hmm. there's always been there's always been something it's like something's hurting yeah um and that would always take my squat um because mind you i squatted i hit 700 like four years ago yeah yeah <laughs> i've squatted 700 uh quite a a handful of times at this point okay, uh yeah. um uh you know so and i've so- benched i've benched a lot <laughs> Yeah. I mean, you know? <laughs> your, your bench, I mean, I've been watching your bench training for the last year and I'm just like, what's going to be your opener? Like, I'm very curious. We'll get to the details. Yeah, we'll get of, there. Um, but so you were talking, um, you know, you stayed healthy since June, since, since South Africa. Um, and it looked like after South Africa, you know, you had a little bit of a fire kind of lit under you. Like, I think, I think that taking, you missed one lift in like the last like forever um and that missing that one lift it seems like it really lit a fire under you and you came back with a vengeance um with your training but that being said it wasn't like you were doing dumb shit you you stay deep in the pocket like you were very deep in the pocket all the way through until only recently have you started really like you know hitting some pink some single prs and stuff like right. this yeah um so so was that the case i mean and do you attribute kind of that when you came, you, you looked at the time and you said, okay, I've got this long, I'm going to stay in the pocket. I'm not going to get injured. Yes. Um, I remember, I think it was right after I failed that deadlift and I went to the back. I already, I was like, well, let me take a moment and process this. Um, like what just happened. Right. Um, and what I need to do next. That was like, literally, I, I remember I was getting, I was waiting to be drug tested. And it got yeah. it was late. It took so long. Yeah, they, I saw, yeah, I saw um, on your story, man. Yeah, you were yeah. waiting forever. <clears throat> um, I remember just sitting there. I was like, okay, let's start planning. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. Wow, wow. Yeah. So, so who? This is. I mean, I can't. Like, we we can fast forward two weeks <laughs> right. from now after this. We'd be like, that one miss led to this. Like, like that that miss. Keiko was here when he missed this deadlift, and now. 
Sheffield, it's like where, you know, right. um, it's going to be very exciting for us all to see. So what are your goals with Sheffield? Um, you trying to win the whole thing? Are you trying to get a bench, uh, world rec- break the bench world record, get some cash on that? Um, I mean, you've got to finish in the top two of the 93s in order to make the U.S. national team go back to Worlds. Is that something that you're thinking about? What, what it kind of, where's your head at going into it? Uh, I would say priority wise would be obviously I do want to win the whole thing. I mean, all of us do everyone, everyone going there wants to win the whole thing, obviously. Um, but yeah, priority would be to win. Um, and then bench record just as a cherry on top, Mm -hmm. you know, if I can, if I can push it pretty, pretty high up because I feel pretty, I I almost PR'd on bench today, like just like two hours ago. Yeah, I was just like, I did like, I wasn't even um like I, I was tired. I was like falling asleep, and then because <laughs> I'm just like I'm yeah I'm like in such deep fatigue uh, that is I'm just kind of uh, almost on autopilot at this point. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So yeah. and then what about uh, making the the U.S. national team? I tell my I always tell myself I'll see when I get there. Okay. Yeah. Like if I get it, then I'll I'll let me I'll I'll look at it in my hand, you know. Mm-hmm. Instead I mean, of obviously, um, if you win the whole thing, you're gonna be you're gonna you're gonna be right. a US national team. Right, so it's right. gonna take that goal um, will take care of itself. Yeah, but, but I'll consider uh, the uh, the turnaround, you know, if, uh, that, oh. if that is the case. Yeah. Okay, because you're still thinking like you might want to take a little bit of a break after this, after Shepard. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see how I feel. We'll see how I feel. Okay. 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 I hope yeah. you feel good. Yeah, uh, no, I, I feel, I feel fantastic. So, it's crazy. So, who's going to Sheffield with you? Nina. Okay, Nina. Nina. And then... Nina. Um, my family Nina. actually. Uh, yeah, Joey. Um, and uh, my family actually has to stay because um, they have to babysit a few uh, a few people. And there's a there's just like we just need more hands here right now. Um. So it'll just be me and Nina going. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, cool. Like flying, <clears throat> flying kind of a solo ish, you know. Yeah. Um, gives you are you gonna stick around, do anything in London? I would love to, but I think we we'll only get I think we're only actually no, I think I have three days after. I think I have time to go like mess around. Yeah. Dude, I highly recommend like getting the um, underground pass, the tube pass. And just, you can cruise around so easy on that. It's way better than if you've done any kind of like uh, mass transit systems in the U S that, you know, like in Chicago or New York city, like they don't really take you to the places you want to go. You have to like get out and get an Uber, the tube in London, man, it takes you wherever you want, all the best places that you want to go. Oh, cool. I'll Uh, keep that in mind. Super fun. I highly recommend it. Um, all right. So let's get into some numbers. Um, I saw that, uh, you took a squat single like five days ago, 330 kilos, 663 pounds. Yeah. You posted it five days ago. I don't know when. Um, that's only five kilos before your best, uh, five kilos below your best. Um, it looked yeah. pretty, pretty easy. I mean, you it was, definitely, you're fatigued yeah. now. Yeah. So taking that into consideration, it, it looked pretty easy, I think, um, given where you are in prep. So you're only five kilos off what you posted. Uh, which I'm assuming you're posting some, th- you know, you have some things that you're not posting and you're right there um, on bench bench. As far as singles, I haven't seen any big singles out of you since December. There was a 231 kilo single 531 bench um, legit looked like an opener again to me. Um, 531 is a, it looked like somewhere maybe between an opener and a second attempt. Right. Um, it's only, it's only 10 kilos be- below your best, uh, 242.5. Um, your world record's 238.5. So you smoked 231. And even your 238.5 world record going back to South Africa, like moved very well. Yeah. So um, the question I'll have for you. So first is how is squat feeling? Let's, let's knock that out first. Squat's feeling great. Um, okay. so that 300 I took, that was actually like, I remember I was the same thing. I was kind of an autopilot and I was kind of, mm-hmm. I was so tired. Um, but generally at this point I would take like a 618 ish squat and then yeah. it'd probably move around the same speed. Uh, like in historically in previous, uh, preps, uh, in preps, and for example, in the prep that I did 
squat that 305, 302, whatever it was, uh-huh, 305. Uh-huh. Um, I think my last single was like 618. Or I, I remember loading that up and it was about like, you know, I usually squat like 30, uh, 30 to 40 pounds less in training. Um, okay. If that makes sense, you know? Yeah, so. yeah. Man, I love that you know your numbers like, like, cause I've been watching like, because this is one of those things where when you kind of stay in the pocket and you don't go out for these big ass singles that you're comparing back to two, you know, over two years ago now, um, where you are in prep and how fast things are moving. And even though this is still like an RPE eight or nine or something, you know, it's still like a, a it's a PR, you know, because yeah, it's yeah. like, you know, it, based on how much fatigue you're under at this time and stuff. Um, so that's awesome. So, so you're feeling like, um, there's going to be a squad PR happening at Sheffield. I would very much like that. And I'd be very surprised if I didn't squat a PR <laughs> at this point, because yeah. even, even that 300 the other day, uh, it was like, for me, it was slow. Cause I was like kind of tired, mm-hmm. but just generally for me to hit 300 at this point is a big deal for me. Yeah, um, yeah. Gen- like normally um 300 is like an annual lift for me and i, I mainly probably because i was so hurt you know yeah, so you kind of yeah. just always kind of going up and down mm-hmm. um but for the longest time 300 was my third attempt for like the past six meets i feel like um yeah. 300 yeah. 302 you know um, Two, even 292 um at worlds in sweden oh that's right um, yeah that's because my and... iron that was a shaky lift i remember that because i couldn't load onto my left leg so when i got down i kind of just shifted everything onto my <laughs> onto my right side and just like prayed <laughs> wow wow yeah so we're we're due to see yeah but you're right i mean other than that 305 dude you've been you've been hitting 300 since 2019 california yep. state championships that was your third attempt That's so right. i mean yeah you're you're due for three i'm due for it yeah 305 and beyond now yeah. um so that's huge okay and then getting back to the bench then 231 um that you did back in december lately you've been posting a lot of like like rep there's been some rep prs like some fatigue rpe pr type stuff where it's like you know this time of prep i'm I'm way ahead of where i was um but i'm telling you i went and looked at that 531 like 30 minutes ago and i swear to god it looks like at best a, somewhere between a first attempt and a second attempt you know what i mean at the worst yeah. it could be for for a lot of people that would be an opener for sure so yeah um and and that 231 is only 10 kilos below your best it's only like eight kilos below your world record so i know you don't i know bench is like your secret weapon and i you know i don't want you to give away any secrets but um are you gonna open with like 509 or uh that'd be nice like (laughs) because like like i've been hitting 509 five around the you know 500 515 just like casually mm-hmm. it, you know it, it's become more uh <clears throat> all three of my lifts are at a new point for okay. me like this is almost yeah. like i was saying i've never been this strong um mm-hmm. you know i put up I, I i put a weight on my back and my hands that's for so many years it was a Oh, this is, you know, it's gonna, I, I you know, it's, it's heavy in your hands, you know, yeah, like, yeah. especially in, like in a, in a prep, but I'm, I'm unracking these weights. I'm putting these weights in my hand and it's like, I'm tired and it's still moving. You know, I'm, yeah. I, I've been, I'm, I'm essentially hitting all my third attempts, like pretty consistently mm-hmm. in training lately. So, um, yeah, I like the bench. I think I'm well set to bench something pretty good <laughs> yeah definitely a world record i mean yeah. 530.2 um or or let's see 525.8 which in kilos i'm gonna switch back and forth 238.5 um in south africa it moved super smooth and easy so i i mean you're good for a lot on top of that um but i just i love to look watch your bench and just think like what is this man gonna open with like this is ridiculous right. like this guy's gonna freaking open with like well into the fives where you know people aren't doing that like a weight class up you know so so that's massive um and then deadlift i saw a 340 single 751 like three days ago that's only seven and a half kilos below your comp best right yeah and again fatigued moved well um probably looked like maybe like a second or something um with given the fatigue but like an easy second like consistent simple 
Um, so how is a deadlift feeling? Cause I know squat and deadlift, you know, because of your rib issue that you have, mm. right. Being born with one less rib or you with, with, uh, what is my, it? My oblique on that side, my oblique and like kind of my side wall of abs there. Yeah. So both lifts, those have always been kind of a little bit problematic in, in like keeping your position and keeping, you know, especially squat, I think, but, um, man, both of them are taken off right now. Yeah. They're both looking great. Yeah. And, uh, on that really quick, uh, when I'm most fatigued, that's, mm -hmm. that's where things, that's the area that starts to like mess with me. Then it, you know, it bleeds off to other things, obviously. Um, but yeah, deads is also feeling insane. Um, I, like I mentioned, I believe in the post, uh, I remember at this, again, I remember at this point in like my past four preps, I would take seven or five as that mm -hmm. about, at about the same speed, the same mm -hmm. speed, same, like feeling, you know, how you know, just how the bar feels in your hand, yeah. you know, just how the weight feels. Yeah. Just same speed, same, same feel. Um, I was telling, uh, sometimes I chat with Joe, I'm like, man, my seven fifties feel like my old seven Oh fives just in general, like, mm -hmm. like before it's seven Oh five, I would take a six sixty one uh, last warm up, but now it's like before seven fifty one, I'll take seven Oh five as last warm up kind of feeling. And it's, you know, so. Yeah. I mean, seven fifty, like we're talking uh, in, uh, in pounds a lot, but basically I'm switching back and forth on my right. open powerlifting here, but uh, I mean, that is right in the range of your best um, third, you know, right around your best is 766, but I mean, uh, like in South Africa, you 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 topped out at 738.5. So 750 to be hitting that like casual in the gym, consistently making it feel like it's 705. That's that's huge, man. That is a big deal for you. Um, so when we wrap all this up together, uh, I don't want you to give me a specific number or anything, but we're looking 900. Uh, I mean, is is 900 the mark? Oh yeah, I mean. Like I, I've been wanting, I've been feeling good for 900 since 2021. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, that's why I've been so mm -hmm. almost like, I don't know how to say it. Uh, <laughs> Superstitious? Uh, no, I'm trying to, uh, I don't want, it's like kind of weird to say, it, but it's just been like, I've just been like, <laughs> like blue, blue balling myself for like mm -hmm. two years about mm -hmm. my, <laughs> mm -hmm. about my uh, totals, you know? Yeah. Totally. Like, you, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's like the only way you can think of it. Yeah. It's like it. the only way you can see it. You've right? been teasing um, it for so exactly, long. Exactly. I know, mean, so, it, you, 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 with that, <laughs> with your biggest total ever, you were, you were so close, you know, um, with 892 and a half, I yeah. mean, you're only eight and a half kilos off. And it's like, definitely, you probably thought you might have had it. 900 here or there in between now and then yeah um but it just the circumstances never really yeah aligned always, that you needed that you had to hit that you know yeah it was always an uphill battle from the, uh, after the 892 even going into the 892 i was already kind of hurting but mm -hmm. um like ever uh, since then it was kind of an uphill battle and i was able to mm -hmm. kind of recuperate uh in the nats last year at 888 um funny you mentioned uh actually hurt my shoulder after nats leading into the last year's world's Oh really? Yeah, uh, it wasn't too bad, but um, it was enough to not load because uh, I chipped the bench at five twenty five and a half, and I didn't yeah. instead of just taking the five thirty. You uh -huh, know, uh -huh. um, for me that five twenty five and a half felt extremely hard uh, when I was oh. there. Yeah, wow. yeah. Um, Must have been the pain because it looked freaking easy. <clears throat> yeah, it was really it was it was quite painful because after that. Um, I felt a new pain. I think I mentioned this uh, only to Nina and maybe a few other people. I felt like the, I've never had this. My whole right, like from my clavicle down to my rib, mm -hmm. uh, it was like in a sharp pain after that um, after that bench uh, oh, wow. in South Africa. It was weird. It was like almost like cramping inside. It was mm -hmm. like yeah, I don't know, but um, so I kind of just toughed it out through deads. Um, I remember doing my second deadlift. And like I, I what was it, 738? Yeah, 738. Yeah. And um I remember like all I felt was just that pain through my right side. Damn. Like from it was like from like my clavicle here all the way, like behind my behind my chest, I guess, you know, yeah, all the way down yeah. to my rib. And uh, I was like, Oh, that's a that hurts. That's a new pain, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that was interesting. I don't know. It's probably stemmed from the bench though. But and um, and have you had that? that has just gone away yeah, or I just you do anything away. to rehab it? okay oh no i've been 
man, the past nine months. Oh man, the past nine months have been probably the hardest, smartest, mm-hmm. most attentive training every single day mm-hmm. since then. Yeah. And do you do like did you do some rehab work on that shoulder and stuff or oh, yeah. anything oh, specific? Yeah. Or you just take the weights down or what? Um I find a nice I try and find a nice balance. Um, mm-hmm. you know, like um but I definitely do a lot of uh, mobility work. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Another question is like, do you, do you keep some stuff in your pocket when it comes to posting on Instagram and stuff? Like, is there a lot of stuff you're not posting? Sometimes. Okay. If it is, I'm usually just too lazy to post it. Okay. <laughs> it's not too strategic. And do you yeah. typically post same day lifts? Sometimes. Usually. Yeah. Usually. Yeah. yeah that's okay, like, that's I just think it's a weird, I think it's weird to not. Cause it's just like, mm-hmm. Like was this yes this is like two weeks ago, you know? Like Yeah, yeah. Like I never yeah. took my um like for my Instagram. Um there's one thing, this is why I never changed my handle. Uh mm-hmm. kind of going off on this point. Um I never changed my handle to something like Keiko ninety three or you know what I mean? Just something yeah. like like try hard, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've kept it uh League of Lifting uh in the sense of like it's just a for me it's always just been a training log yeah Um, i don't really take it any more serious than that um well you know so i just throw out my lips yeah i love it i mean i think it you know it's what we want as fans of the sport is to just like you know check in with keiko like every you know whatever two or three days whenever you're you're going to post something up and anytime you don't i'm always like what's going on like where's our post you know stuff like (laughs) this and it's probably just like i was tired yeah yeah Um, so do you usually peak well and then hit bigger numbers on the platform than you do in training yeah like a lot actually um there were times that was like many years ago where i would just kind of go to ham in training and Mm -hmm. you know um there's just like no point you know like uh, as long as it's not like rp12 (laughs) you know this is what you know then because if you're not as long as you're not hitting rp12 like every week you're probably fine but um and um, I usually peak pretty dang well, you know? Yeah. And because, I mean, you mentioned that before that you tend to hit your biggest lifts on the platform, which is right. big. I mean, that's, that's different. I mean, that's something that I think is a sign of like a pro, you know, that yeah. what you do in the gym doesn't matter nearly as much as what you do on the platform. Um, how, speaking of that, then is there, is your weight cut pretty manageable then? Because I oh, think yeah. what, what, what hurts a lot of people from the translating gym into platform lifts is the weight cut is really tough so how tough is your weight cut my like i haven't had to sweat in many years <laughs> okay yeah you just stay, you stay yeah I'm, um yeah like i it's just a really easy water cut and um okay. it's um and if i did have to sweat it would be like half a pound maybe if okay. even you know gotcha. um but no like my 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 cut I've, i have it down uh to to the team so and i've done i've done it so many times i've done it so many times now and i always say if i could uh, <laughs> if i can do the water cut uh in my trip to south africa i could do it anywhere okay yeah because that that was long that was uh because we had we went from fresno to san francisco san francisco to frankfurt which was about 13 and a half hours mm-hmm. i had a six hour layover there and then it was yeah. another it was another three, 13 and a half hour flight from Frankfurt to um, Johannesburg. And then we had a shuttle, like a three hour shuttle from there, which got delayed for a few hours. So I, I was, <laughs> yeah. I remember, yeah, I remember just like sitting there and I was like, man, how long has it been? <laughs> I remember. Took, yeah. Yeah. I remember because, uh, you guys were doing the, um, you know, you were sharing your stories on the PA account and I was like, okay, they're leaving. And then I remember like, it was like the next day and in, in real time for me. And I'm like, they're still in the airport in like Frankfurt. I'm like, what is going on? Um, so let's get into worlds 2022, um, a little bit. Cause I, you know, I don't think I haven't heard you really talk about it too much since then. So you had a four-way battle going on you chance Gavin and mill, Gustav, I mean, I guess it was really um, a five-way battle. And how were you feeling going into it on the day of the meet? Um, were you feeling 100, you know, going into it, or were you feeling like a little tired, banged up, anything? 
Like when I woke up that day? Yeah, yeah. Like and mm, and okay. just like, you know, you start hitting your squat warm up. How are you? Were, were you feeling like shit, I'm gonna blow everything out of the water, or are you feeling like damn, I'm feeling a little rough? I felt okay. I guess the best way I felt like okay. Because okay. <laughs> I was just like, I was like, I'm still feeling like I unracked it and I was like, I'm I'm sleepy, bro. <laughs> I was like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, so um uh i knew i was still strong but i was just like uh like even like by the time i even like started warming up for squats i was like hey guys i want i want to go to sleep you know I was, okay yeah, so yeah. that's probably not the best feeling to have no on, no on not, the day not of the, the world best, championship yeah. yeah so so let's say you're at like 90 yeah, um, sure, yeah and so on squat you know you took 300 on your 300 kilos on your third that's only five kilos below your compass so you're probably feeling pretty good at that point you know, like you're getting very near prs and not you're not going to hit prs typically uh, on the world stage especially in traveling to a place like south africa um on bench you hit the world record 238.5 and you're going six for six going into deadlifts you hit your first two deadlifts you missed 350 though um and your best your best coming in in the competition was 347 and a half right so tell us about like kind of what went into the decision of taking 350 versus 347 and a half or or where you know because your 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 bench you took you took something um you know 238.5 is a little lower than your best ever same thing on squat you were five kilos below your comp s and that's probably a pretty smart strategy at worlds you know when with the travel and everything like that um, but then you went for a two and a half kilo personal best, um, on deadlift. So just tell us behind the scenes of like kind of the conversations that went into that decision. So basically after the second deadlift, they were like, how much do you have? And I was like five, 10, 12 and a half, maybe, mm-hmm. you know, I didn't I actually didn't know what I hit on my, um, second dead. Cause okay. I'm just like, I'm just like in, I'm just like in lifter mode. I don't yeah. just. You know, like I have no just, idea what's happening on the board. I don't, I don't know where I am. Mm-hmm. Just give me a weight and see, you know, throw it at me, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so they asked me, they're like, what do you, what do you, I didn't even know what I hit on my second, like I mentioned. They were like, what do you have? I was like, five, 10, 12 and a half. Yeah, that's what, you know, okay. uh, 12 and a half if I have to, I could probably, I could probably squeeze that out. So, um, so 12 and a half would have been three, would have been yeah, exactly right. I, I, know, that's the thing. I didn't even know what I hit on my second. So it's <laughs> 10 would have been, 10 would have been 345. Yeah. Okay. Um, um so i think what happened is they put 350 as like a placeholder okay but when they were going to change it back to 345 or 347 and a half it was too late because gustav had changed to 350 oh wow and gustav had already uh loaded up oh okay so see i did not know this okay so he had already hit 350 or he had already taken 350 he had already, yeah, they had already loaded it. And then, you know? so at just, that point, it's already yeah. too late. Mm-hmm. Yeah, go ahead. I'm looking at, I'm looking at, uh, uh, good lift is a little bit different here. But, um, oh, yeah, wow. Okay. Because he had lot number three and you had, it went, yeah, number, it went down to lot numbers. Mm-hmm. And, and you had lot number 22. So that means you could not take that weight, um, unless you had jumped out and lifted before him. Exactly. Um, wow. That is amazing. Okay. So I did not realize that that was happening. Um, was there, you know, like what was, what was going on? Because I know Joey was at Meganats. I know Mike Z was there. I know Michael Davis was, was helping, I believe. And Nina was in there too, or maybe Michael Davis wasn't there. Cause he was, I don't think, no, he was lifting the next day. He was lifting the next day. Okay. Okay. Um, from what I know Mm -hmm. is the table was far. Okay. And by the time they got to, you know, because uh, uh-huh. uh where we where they were talking to me was across the room from where the table was okay so you know and it just they just didn't make it in time gotcha okay so it was never really your intention to go because obviously you said you know maybe 10 kilos would be the max so 345 350 is a long ways from that wow i didn't realize that that's what had come down to you know because i've heard like rumors and different stories and different things like this yeah um but um it was yeah, just it. Some, something as simple as just we just didn't change it back. We just, it's just saying it changed back in time. Yeah. Damn, that yeah. is a rough way to go. It is, it is a rough pill to swallow, right? After you yeah. think about it, yeah. That um, is rough. You know, and I know I don't blame anyone. You know, yeah. like even at the time, I was just like, because you know, I was like, oh man, what happened? I was like, why did why did who lo- who loaded that? And mm-hmm. I and then I kind of chatted about what happened, and I was like, 
oh that sucks you know? <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so it was one. yeah it's a rough one that was a weird weird it was almost like a rough and weird one to swallow mm-hmm. you know so um mm-hmm. so but i you know i don't blame anyone i mean it's it happens uh it's part yeah. of the game and uh it happens all the time in sports is what i is what i tell myself thing you know um wrong wrong play goes out wrong uh the coach uh in boxing they tell them to go for this and they get knocked out you know yeah yeah you know so um exactly you know and i mean 347.5 too i mean just thinking about it it's like you know i think i think if, if we had, were writing down what you could possibly hit going into the meet you probably thought you could have hit 350 oh yeah um, yeah, yeah you yeah. know like like five days like out you probably yeah. like 350 i mean if i have to pull 350 for the win i, I could probably yeah. pull it um so i could see that all right so how'd you deal with this loss after this is all said and done i mean you you, people call you mr perfect you know and and you didn't miss for the longest time and you know you took an l and it's something that you really didn't have to deal with for for very long before how mentally did you overcome all of that and how'd you deal with it for First, I hated that name, by the way. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, right. yeah, I was just like, man, Ryan, you uh-huh. know, that's not, I was like, man, you know, that's not a good name. <laughs> I was like, you know, yeah. that's not a good thing to, yeah. you know, for, for, to portray. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was tough. You know, it was just like, you come home. Um, it was the longest I took off. I, I, I purposely took a long time off of just like no lifting. Okay. Just, just for me. You know, like I was like, well, I guess I get my break anyways, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I took advantage of that, which was one of the honestly one of the smartest moves I've ever done. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I knew I, my body was like begging for that break. Yeah. Um, because even after, like, let's jump back real quick. Like, you know, leading into last year's nationals, mm-hmm. I kind of almost got back into prep. I didn't take really time off after Worlds because I was like, oh, well, I guess I have to get ready, you know. You kind of yeah. ju- you kind of start getting ready to be in prep again, versus just like I took complete I took a complete like almost four weeks off. Wow, nice. And that that was hard. I felt like shit. So <laughs> you know, you, <laughs> yeah. Well, I felt like shit, like just not lifting. You know, I didn't yeah. I didn't do, you know maybe I'll do some push ups in my room, <laughs> but um, like I'm a I'm a slob now. What can yeah I yeah yeah <laughs> I like literally like uh, just played video games for like four. You know what I mean? Like I just yeah. had more time to uh, to do stuff. Um, but um. It took. It gave me a lot, a lot of time to kind of self-reflect um, mm-hmm. about it. Um, you know, you, you perhaps you look for someone to blame. Yeah. Um, that's. I, I believe that's human. Um, that's normal. Um, but there was nothing. There was no no one to blame. That's what I came to the c- conclusion. Mm-hmm. Uh, the only the only thing the only thing is for me to get stronger. That's what I got mm-hmm. from it. Um, so. In those in that time off, I was like, well, let's say I do get Sheffield. I'm gonna this whole this from here into March. You know, I mm-hmm. I remember I remember that whole nine months. I was like, cross your fingers. Whenever I chat with someone, cross your fingers. You know that I get mm-hmm. get the spot. Um, I was just training, training like training for Sheffield. That's that's mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. training like I'd never won. Training like mm-hmm. yeah, and I, it, it was fun. Uh, back to your original point about. Um, a fire being lit again yeah um you know obviously the fire it, it may not be brighting uh may not be burning as bright if you want to take a break yeah you know yeah. if yeah. if your if your initial thing is like hey let me take a let me let me catch my breath let me take a breather yeah. um but i but i but i took the opportunity to do that um so that fire is probably the brightest it's ever been you know like i feel i feel i found the fun in it again because yeah. especially leading into those um leading in the worlds and just you know things are said or here and there who knows right mm-hmm. and it's just like man like you guys aren't making this like no one's making this fun you know like yeah. I, I'm, I, felt yeah. I felt you know? that you know yeah yeah like, i could it, just get a sense of your vibe that you were kind of like this was starting to weigh and it was starting to be more of a burden than it was like a exactly, fun yeah. thing. Yeah. And uh, that made me, that made me sad because I love lifting. Mm-hmm. I, you know, like I mentioned a long time, uh, I think I've mentioned before in some posts is like, um, I was going to get into combat sports, uh, when I was younger. 
And like I mentioned, my family was like, no, <laughs> Abs- no way, no way, no way. You know, we don't want you getting hurt, hurt, you know, mm-hmm. or hurting someone, um, yeah. you know? And um, I was like, okay, well, what's the next best thing? I was like, okay, let me lift, let me lift weights just for some good physical exertion you know mm-hmm. um and i always found just joy and fun in doing it you know and um when it started becoming more of a burden mm-hmm. in that sense i was like man like it's just like it's you know it's just like kind of kills your vibe you know it's just yeah. like you know and it's 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 something obviously it's something you don't want because you just you know like it's um like you could take you could take anything like say say you play golf and you love playing golf mm-hmm. but something starts happening you know and like it starts taking away it starts taking away your your fun and love for that for golf you know it's the same thing yeah, exactly you know? so yeah no i mean I, I think everyone experiences it um where, where it becomes more like a job and then i mean when you're doing something at your level where it's going to be the difference between like body weight or like two and a half kilos is going to decide you can't you can't have that like even that subconscious, like half a percent less effort being put in and training, um, it's going, that's going to all add up over a period of, of a prep to where you're not going to be your best self when you show up on the platform next, unless you have that fire burning. So, um, it's been amazing to see your rebound from that and to see your attitude be so positive. And you seem like you're having fun. You seem like, you know, um, you're putting, shit ton of weight on your total is what it looks like i don't we're all going to be anxiously watching this yeah. with the totals <laughs> i'll the be totals, I'll, I'll be watching yeah. myself too <laughs> like, yeah exactly I mean, look, <laughs> looking at these numbers when they start adding up it's like it's going to be big um so it's been great to see the rebound and everything you've handled it with all with grace um as we would all expect from you you know because that's just the kind of guy that you are and you have a good team around you with nina as well keeping you grounded and everything and she's awesome um so I want to just get through, I want to go through a couple of just like kind of some, some quick hitters. Uh, the last like deep question would just be like, what does it mean to you to represent the USA when you go um, to these world events and things like that? I'm just, it's like, you, there's no words, mm-hmm. you know, you, you just, it's, it's, it's way beyond you. You know, it's just, you for example, when I competed in South Africa, a lifter of mine, um, his mom is a, a school teacher, mm-hmm. and her second grade students were watching me compete. You know, I saw uh, that. You know, and like, man, think about it. you know, what I mean, like, holy mm-hmm. shit, you know, yeah. <laughs> they're watching you know? it in class. Things, you know, like, yeah, they're watching it in class. They're watching, you know, and um, I, I think about stuff like that yeah you know and and, you know you just gotta when you represent a country in these types of things it's just you it just makes you want to do your best no matter what Mm -hmm. and on a similar line what is your biggest motivation to succeed in powerlifting or just in life in general no that's actually something I've, i've uh taken a lot of time to ponder on because especially when those things were getting a little mundane i suppose mm-hmm. um it was just like so, you know it was like what why 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 you know you always have that why am i doing this why why do exactly. i put my body through so much um and i thought about it and it's something that i've always even said as a kid i, I realize this is that someone someone has to do it mm-hmm. someone has to do it so I'm pretty sure I can do it, <laughs> you know, so mm-hmm. I might as well do it, you know, because, yeah. Um, yeah, it's just, I have a lot, I, I have a lot of friends, family, uh, who cannot do those things mm-hmm. and um, they do not, <sighs> they don't have the privilege to do it anymore Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know so i think about them when i'm like man like i i gotta i gotta i gotta do this i gotta get this done you know Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because and you know in a lot of instances i i know if i could speak to them um 
they'd be like hey man put your put your best foot forward you know mm -hmm. uh so i that's think about great. that a lot yeah that's great man it's about something bigger than just you as well you know um like there's there, there's other people in your mind when you're thinking about this stuff so i think that's a good place to be that's not just all ego driven, you know, about trying to present yourself in a certain way that you're doing it for like a higher purpose or a bigger reason. Um, that'll keep you, that'll keep you motivated. Yeah. Um, what are, what are your life goals outside of powerlifting? And you don't have to give me a lot of them, but I mean, like... <laughs> that's actually a hard question. <laughs> that is a hard one. I know. I, I, I would have a hard time answering that one myself. Uh... <laughs> I'm not, watch, I'm not looking past the next two weeks, to be honest. Um, you know, lately, and I, I don't know, maybe I'm just getting older. Uh, it's just, a, you know, just start a family uh, down the down the road, and um, just give them a give them a good environment to uh, live and grow up in, kind of thing. You know, so yeah. that uh, that has become more prevalent in my when someone asks me something like that um yeah. compared to me you asked me five years ago you know <laughs> we, so. i think we joked about this in austin because you were kind of like wrangling everyone to go out to dinner on the final oh night. yeah yeah I remember and that. i was like man you're gonna make a great father one day like you really are and, oh, yeah, and, I you, remember that. and you and nina too you're, you're like a great <laughs> mom and dad um for, for everyone that was there um so mature and kind and calm and um so you guys are gonna be great parents one day um where'd you grow up here in fresno uh fresno. Fresno, yeah fresno california okay um, my uh i'm not actually and I, there's one thing i wish i spoke about in the, in the spd thing is um a lot of people don't know uh my family i'm the first i'm a first generation um immigrant for okay. my for, you know and um my parents are from the philippines uh okay. they grew up in the slums of the philippines uh, wow. you know yeah and they um they tell me all they tell me stories all the time about it um and you know especially since i was a kid they'd be like oh you know we didn't even have this bed why you you know like <laughs> you know what i mean so i feel like that always kind of kept me grounded as well because i took that to heart about stuff mm -hmm. like that um yeah and so it's very interesting because first generation immigrants um oftentimes there's this big disconnect between the, the the parents that came to the country and experienced the old country oh, oh yeah <laughs> and, versus like you growing up here right. and like you're kind of like complete opposite of what you would expect the parents of immigrants to be in that sense because like you're into video games like as being like your main yeah. thing before powerlifting and then powerlifting you're like into sports and stuff and like in a lot of those kind of countries and stuff. It's like, it's all about like becoming like a doctor or an engineer mm -hmm. or something oh, yeah. like that and making money. And that's their only focus and anything else, art or entertainment or sports are all not, considered like secondary. Yeah. Not nothing. even, not even a consideration. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, and I will, I'll be the first to admit that my parents were pretty like they, you know, they're, they were like that, you know, <laughs> yeah. cause you know, they're from, you know, they grew up in the, the time, you know, yeah. um, that was just the, the generation they grew up in. You know, and I, I I try and remember that I'm like, hmm, like I wonder what I'll be saying. You know, like what yeah. constraints I oh you don't understand. You know, yeah. Um, <laughs> what but it's um, they're supportive and everything. I mean, they're they're cool with everything. All your life uh, choices and things. I remember I had a good conversation with, with my mom once. Um, I don't want to say well they yes they are supportive, mm -hmm. but only because I've proved that they can. They could trust me. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. Something like that, along those lines. You know, my yeah. mom was like, "Hey, I don't know what this is about, but I know you. You know, I know, I know you'll, I know you'll get it done." So I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> was was winning the first world championship kind of like that was a big one. Uh, winning yeah. na winning nationals in twenty nineteen was a big one actually. And they were yeah. like, "Okay, fine, I guess you." Okay, can. fine. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> go in the garage. Yeah. Waste your life. Yeah. <laughs> no they're, they're no they're they're extremely supportive um okay, even good. more so than um other um immigrant parents that i uh knew and grew up around with my own friends you know same you know so um i'm very fortunate um that both my parents are extremely extremely uh supportive of it That's you know it, it uh it gives you a sense of uh, security you know it yeah. gives you a sense of like uh, comfort they're like, mm -hmm. hey, even if I, uh, even if, even if I fuck up here or there, you know, that they'll, 
they'll uh, they'll always support you. you know? Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's what you have when you have a significant other, family, good family support, things like that. It's like all this noise from the outside world really doesn't matter. As yeah. long as my mom still loves me, I'm good, you know? Yeah. Um, so I feel that I'll look forward to meeting them someday. Hopefully, you know, we'll have a meet, a uh, nationals or something yeah. somewhere where they can come and something and come easy. To. Yeah. Something yeah. easy. Yeah. Um, okay. So I'm just super quick hitters. What was the first sport that you ever played? Soccer. Okay. And what was your growing up? What are the different nicknames that you've had? So Mr. Bench, Mr. <laughs> Perfect, obviously, which you didn't really want. Yeah, we were like 10 years old, oh. <laughs> you know, oh. so they would, they would call me names like that, you know, okay, like, you know, and I'm like, no, bro, I'm just because I started benching when I was like 11. I remember and I was I was like training hard at that time, wow. too, because wow. I was like, I'd be watching Rocky and like Dragon Ball. I'm like, oh, like, let me, you know, like, I just yeah. kind of go. Yeah, you know, so and I, I, I played sports my whole life, so I was always pretty active. Um, mm. There was a time where I did gain weight here, like when I was younger. And when I stopped lifting for a few years uh, in my late teens, because I was going to college. Mm -hmm. um, but um, and you were focused on video. I know you were like like a professional gamer, like before it was like a bigger thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, some uh, again, I don't want to jump too far, but um, mm -hmm. someone actually asked me like, hey, why didn't you uh, pursue that? Because you're good, you know, like because yeah. I have friends who they make good money, <laughs> you know, they, yeah. you know, they're, they're set, you know, they're like set for life. And, um, for me, uh, the answer I always give them is for me personally, and this doesn't apply to everyone, right. Lifting brought me more happiness mm -hmm. than, you know, sitting at my computer trying to play for 10 hours a day. I felt like shit physically, yeah. yeah physically you feel like shit. And then I'll, and then that leads into your everyday, everyday life, obviously. Yeah. Mentally. Um, so for me, you know and back onto the original point you know i chose happiness mm -hmm. that's what i always i chose i chose my own personal happiness of uh uh you know something important to me being physically fit you know that just so happens to uh ended up being that i'm pretty dang good <laughs> at at the uh, squat benching and deadlifting yeah yeah you know so <laughs> absolutely yeah um what about the fridge oh yeah i like that, that. that one. one i like that one i like them because that because um, it makes me feel big <laughs> write it down right now the fridge <laughs> We're going to start all the Instagram stories now will be the fridge. I think if I had to choose one, I probably, I think the fridge is the best because okay. Mr. Bench is like, uh, Ed Cohen gave me, uh, gave me that one. Oh, I did yeah. not know that. Yeah. Ed Cohen called me, uh, Mr. Bench. Um, and that was on the same lines of when he, uh, called Dr. Deadlift, Dr. De you know, you remember? Okay. Uh -huh, uh -huh. It, um, because quick story, I ran into Ed Cohen in 2019 and he asked me, you know, we were just chatting. He was just like, what'd you bench? Because it was after uh, after I won that year. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I benched 509, I want to say that year. <laughs> Tell me if I'm right, because I'm pretty good about my numbers. It was oh, like 508, yeah. 509. It had to be 509. 509.2. Yeah. Nationals in Illinois. 2019, yeah. Yep. Chicago, that's right. Um, yeah, you're good with your numbers, especially am, yeah. in pounds, which is weird. Yeah. Because it's always in, yeah, it's always in kilos. Um, but I, ch I chatted with him. He was like, oh i hate you he was like oh i already hate you <laughs> <laughs> and then um you know i messaged I, I think i commented on a post uh a few days afterwards and he was like nice meeting you mr bench and then nice. that's that's how that one came around i was like oh cool that's a cool name i didn't even, you know yeah uh i've never given myself any names <laughs> you know so these that's are all yeah should, that, that's, that's how it should be, be right yeah yeah um i think that's it right fridge mr bench mr mm -hmm. perfect i that one's we won't use it anymore. Yeah, I, yeah. I, yeah, it's dead. It's, it's gone. Thank goodness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Um, who's a person that you look up to in powerlifting or in strength sports? You know, like when you were coming up, like an inspiration. When I, when I first started lifting, uh, it was like Dan. It was like the time of like the animal athletes, like Dan Green, Richard Hawthorne, Brandon mm -hmm. Lilly, and Andre Milanichev. Um. Ed Cohen, obviously. Um, yeah, that's kind of a generation. Before. That's a whole. Is that crazy? Yeah. How how yeah. like I, I I've, I've actually I've spoken to some lifters nowadays, and mm. um, they don't know any of them. They're just people. like they're like who who's Andre Milanovic, bro? Yeah, but like some of them are like who's Ed Cohen? You know? Did you meet Dan Green? Because I know he's a. He's I a did meet Dan Green. I uh, I met him in my. Okay, I bet you I got the date of this one too. Uh, mm. I met Dan Green May 
15, May 16th, 2015. Uh, at a meet, there's a May 15th, 2016. 2016, Damn. 2016, you were a year off. Is it 16? I'm a year off. Boss of Bar. Yeah, Boss of Norcal 2. two. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And um back when you were only benching five four or no, you were only benching uh three eighty six. Yeah, three eighty five point eight. Yeah. I remember Damn, that. That's me. wild you know these numbers, especially pounds I find way harder to remember <laughs> because they're all these weird odd numbers. I think that I think that was the first meet I did lift at six fifty. Do you fact check that? Since you're there. Yeah. yeah, of course. Um what, was that, what is that? Uh two, hold on, I'm gonna switch it back to pounds. Six uh 650 yep deadlift 650.3 oh, wow i remember that yeah i yeah. remember walking up to that um but yeah i met dan green at his gym over there um really cool guy really cool yeah. guy 295 for the people who want to know in kilos fyi <laughs> i got to get better at my kilo math and like being able to do that yeah I'm a, i've gotten pretty good at going back between the two i've gotten like really good especially because we uh at one of my older gyms we used to have a lot of weightlifters like olympic mm-hmm. weightlifters so they'd always they'd only they only talk kilos uh-huh, you know yeah. so yeah i've been trying to only talk in kilos just because it's like round numbers and we're talking with world records and so yeah um okay a couple more quick hitters what is your favorite anime like your personal favorite in and general then, you, like, your, dragon, pers- like, your personal probably like, dra- i had to go i just had to go dragon ball dragon ball because right. like when i was I think I watched like it was like on those old black boxes with like the you know the illegal ones <laughs> you know like mm-hmm. on TV, and mm-hmm. I would watch like Spanish Dragon Ball when wow. I was like I was like probably like five. Do you speak Spanish? Do your parents speak Spanish? No, they uh so they speak uh, Tagalog from because they're from the Philippines. Okay, okay, right? yeah. So it's and pretty cl- it's pretty close, honestly. Yeah, that's the thing. I I wasn't I wasn't sure. I know like right. a lot of people from Philippines like speak Spanish or something. It's similar. pretty dang close, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. there's a lot of similarities. Yeah. yeah um and so dragon ball and then what is the best anime for people who've never watched anime before like someone like me like what if you're like hey here's the gateway drug to anime like you're gonna it's very uh palatable for someone like right, if you're, right. you know what i'm saying honestly if i had to choose one mm-hmm. probably something like demon slayer demon slayer yeah probably right because time. because it's not too much it's a very straightforward story. There's not too much to digest there. You know, you know, like it's yeah, it's watch the animation will hold you. Mm-hmm. Um I in my opinion, the animation really carries that show. Mm-hmm. Where it's it's great, but like, you know, having a great animation definitely um will hold someone, you know. Um mm-hmm. I think that's a good gateway anime. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um I I do street photography, which is like very unpalatable for normal people that when they look at photography they think it's really ugly. And I have like a, a handful of photographers and one or two books in particular that I'm like, if you look at this book, then you will love street photography. Like this is the gateway drug. Right. It's very pretty. It's very, you know, yeah. easily palatable. So okay, cool. I'm gonna check out the Demon Slayer then. Um, do you do you have a favorite football team? Niners, Raiders. I have to. I mean, so I don't get beat up when I go to the gym. I probably have to say uh, Raiders. <laughs> All right. All if, right. My, <laughs> if my All if my right. so if so my gym owner lets me go into the gym. <laughs> and um, we know you love anime stuff. What do you do? You, so the music that you put on your reels. Is that what you're listening to? Like, it really, yeah, it's really what I'm listening to. In your to. headphones and, and mm-hmm. everything? Okay, yeah. okay, gotcha. Because some, so. sometimes I'll be, sometimes I put like, I don't even I don't want to know, like questionable. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. uh, you know, just like, oh, is he really listening to this? You know, it's yeah. just like, what, what is that? You know, but yeah, that's uh, actually what I'm, yeah, it's kind of what I've been vibing with, especially lately too. Okay, so like, you don't, I, I can't remember, do you ever put rap music? Do you ever, do you ever listen yeah. to rap music? You I listen do, to some... yeah. I, I grew up on rap music. Okay. So like, okay. It, that's, um, it's funny, like a lot of people don't don't know that, like, bro, like, I, I grew up in Fresno, bro. <laughs> like, who's, uh, your, who's your favorite rapper? <laughs> in my adult life, I stopped. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not like listening to it as de- as deep as I used to. Uh huh. Yeah. No, you can just you can you can go back from back in the day or or today. This, you can this, name... this is probably the old head in me, but I gotta go with like Tupac. Nice. Just like just. I don't know. I just miss that. Aggr- I, I I miss that aggressive. Yeah. I mean, I mean, uh, yeah. Yeah. For the West Coast, man. Yeah. 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 
that also helped too. It was pretty, you know, it was pretty popular here when I, was, when I grew up as well. Mm-hmm, so. mm-hmm. Okay. Last two things. Um, when you go out to eat at a nice restaurant, what's your, what's your like go-to thing that you want to order for food? <laughs> it's funny. It's a, it's pretty close to what I normally eat. Cause I usually, I like to stay on track. <laughs> okay. What is uh, it? Just steak and potatoes. Steak and potatoes. Yeah, like right. a, a, rib, a ribeye, good ribeye, medium rare and whatever size they are offering that day. Wow. Dude, yep. I'm from Nebraska. That's all I eat is ribeye, medium rare, Ooh. medium rare. Yeah. What's your go-to trash food thing craving? Like junk like, food? You like junk food. Oh, wait, hold on. I have to think. Probably like some Filipino uh, desserts. There's a, there's a Filipino dessert called hopia. Okay. And it's basically like, it's just like rice. It's just like a, oh man, how do I explain it? Like a sweet rice? <sighs> I'm going to get cash rice for not knowing this, but um, I just... I didn't eat. I just watched Nina eat one, like <laughs> just like today. <laughs> um, it's just like a. It's just a dessert. It's like um. Okay. Uh, yeah. So that okay. yeah. Um. Most Filipino desserts I grew up eating, so like my palate really likes it. Mm-hmm. Um. It's not like fried chicken or like a burger from McDonald's or something. No. no i'm like i, I really like for- i really like sweets like it had to, if it had to be something it'd probably be some type of sweet like all right like a chocolate or you know like an ice cream mm-hmm. chocolate or something like that you know nice yeah well hopefully they'll have all this food for you at the chef oh my goodness i would yeah. like to be i would like to sit there be happy and be like give me all the food <laughs> you know absolutely yeah absolutely so all right, brother. Well, it was awesome talking with you. I know we went way over time. Oh, no, you're fine. As per yeah. usual. I, yeah. But um, I really appreciate it, man. Um, and, I, and we're, you know, we're all pulling for you. Thank you for being so candid with us about, you know, because I know you don't go on very many podcasts and things. So it's really great to kind of get your side of the story out there and just get you out more Kaiko for the world to consume is it's a better world now after this. Yeah, I, I, I realize I um some people like uh again i don't want to go through i don't want to take up too much time but um yeah um i spoke to johnny candido in 2019 for the first for the first time and i remember him saying hey man i've never heard you like this is my first time hearing you speak yeah and like i didn't think about that you know i was like oh yeah, yeah i guess i've never like because in my videos i don't talk uh, you know yeah, like it's just no. like, you know there's uh, not a lot of content <laughs> out there with you in it so yeah. I mean, we're gonna change we're trying to change that you know? yeah that'd be uh, fun yeah i know we we constantly are promoting all the power of thin america lifters and stuff like that um and then i know sheffield is kind of forcing you out of your box a little bit too with their interviews, the and interviews. they're gonna be doing more they're gonna be doing more when you're actually over there and everything so looking oh, yeah. forward to it man <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah it's gonna be fun it's gonna be fun you're one of the stars of powerlifting, so you got to start acting like a star, wearing leather jackets, <laughs> sunglasses. Oh, I actually, know. actually, I'm just enough for uh, weigh in slightly, slightly. Okay, okay. Yeah, just just for fun. Yeah, that's awesome, man. I hope someone gets some good footage of it. Yeah, it's not a tux like Russ, but it's my it's it's my own vibe. I it's your like. own thing. Your own yeah. Thing. All yeah. right, dude. <laughs> to everyone, be on the lookout for that. Make sure someone gets it on the phone, or, or I'm sure, I'm yeah, sure, yeah. sure Justin will get it on on yeah. the big camera and everything. So, all right, brother. Well, it was awesome. Um, thank you again for taking the time and, um, please say hi to Nina and everyone. And, um, who can't wait to see what you do at Sheffield, man. Yeah, man. I'm excited. Yep. All right. Well, with that, peace out.